The NBA is a place where a lot of things can happen. On one hand, it is a place where you can shine on the highest level in terms of being a basketball player. And because of that, you get a lot of fame and money. But there are other things that can happen when you are on the court. You can have your life magnified because of your star power, and you will be the focus of media and paparazzi. You can find yourself thinking you're above things, and of course, you could be a hyped up player and then retire early due to injuries. So allow us to show you former NBA stars whose careers ended terribly. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Number 8. Gilbert Arenas We're going to start and end this list with the Wizards, but these two endings couldn't be further apart from one another. Gilbert Arenas was known as Agent Zero, and he was one of the biggest players in the Washington Wizards history, even signing a major contract with them after proving his skills. But then, in 2010, Arenas was suspended for storing an unlicensed but unloaded gun in his locker and then drawing it on teammate Javaris Crittenton, a guy who also got suspended for gun issues in the locker room. Not exactly the best look for the team there, you know? The suspension was for the rest of the season, but since Agent Zero had played 32 games already, the suspension lasted 50 games. When he came back, he honestly was not the same. He went from being Agent Zero to basically being worth zero, and that gun charge didn't help him seem like a great guy. Arenas went from a top dog to a guy who just limped around until his career ended, and no one talks about him today showing that bad decisions can leave you being less than a memory. Number 7. Brandon Roy Right off the gate, Brandon Roy was one of the best shooting guards in the league. In his rookie debut, he scored 20 points against his hometown team, the Seattle Supersonics, who would then go on to average double figures in his maiden season. For this, Brandon Roy won Rookie of the Year. Roy's rookie numbers were impressive. He averaged 16.8 PPG, 4.4 RPG, 4.0 APG, and 1.2 SPG. Roy's sophomore season was even better with 19.1 PPG, 4.7 RPG, 5.8 APG, and 1.1 SPG. It appeared to many that Brandon would be the Trailblazers franchise player. Alas, this was not meant to be as Roy's knees gave out on him. He had these problems back in college and they seemed to be resurfacing. On April 11, 2010, Roy had a knee injury that would be the beginning of the end to his promising NBA career. An MRI showed a meniscus tear. Roy was able to come back that year for some postseason heroics, but it wasn't meant to be. Roy retired in 2011 due to persistent knee issues. He made an attempt to come back in the 2012-2013 season with the Minnesota Timberwolves, the team that drafted him. The comeback, though, was short-lived and lasted only five regular season games. One has to wonder what it would have been like had he not gotten injured so much. Number 6. Steve Nash What? You thought only would-be great players made the list? Not even close. There are legends and Hall of Famers on this list as well, such as two-time MVP Steve Nash, who announced his retirement in March of 2015. The 40-year-old had a long career, but his time in Los Angeles was a complete disappointment. Nash could not stay healthy. He was limited to just 65 appearances over two seasons out of 164 possible games. Los Angeles paid a king's ransom to acquire him from divisional foe Phoenix in 2012, shipping four draft picks, including two first-rounders, to the Suns and signing the point guard to a three-year $28 million deal. Obviously, the Lakers' brain trust still thought that Nash had a few high-level seasons left in the tank. They were wrong, and the team suffered for quite a long time as a result of it. It didn't tarnish Nash overall as he made the Hall of Fame and then some, but it was not the best look for him. Number 5. Jay Williams People know Jay as a basketball analyst for ESPN, but before that, however, he was a collegiate star in Duke and was hailed as the savior of the Chicago Bulls. While Jay was no Allen Iverson in terms of rookie impact, he still posted solid rookie numbers. He scored 9.5 PPG, 4.7 APG, and 1.1 SPG. Jay was inconsistent during his rookie campaign, but his high school basketball IQ shined through. Jay's first season in the NBA would end up being his last. Jay crashed his Yamaha R6 motorcycle into a streetlight during the offseason. He ended up with multiple injuries that effectively ended his career. He damaged a nerve in his leg, suffered a fractured pelvis, and dislocated several ligaments in his left knee. Riding a motorcycle violated Jay's contract, and he was fortunate that the Bulls still paid him out. He tried to make two comebacks later on after healing up, but it didn't work out. He is a true what-if question in NBA history. Number 4. Yao Ming 
Chinese center Yao Ming made every inch of his 7'6 presence felt during an impressive career with the Houston Rockets. The number one overall pick in the 2002 NBA draft scored 19 points a game, pulled down nine rebounds a night, and single-handedly helped make the NBA a big deal in the world's most populous country. Yao was an eight-time All-Star and dominated his position during the 2000s. Sadly, he was forced to retire at 30 due to injury. The Rocket Star played just five games combined in the 2009-10-2010-11 seasons before finally ending his playing career. He did become an ambassador to the league afterwards, but you really wanted to see him back on the court. Number 3. Len Bias Earlier we talked about great what-if questions in the NBA, but one that still haunts the league to this day is that of Len Bias. Bias was a star at the University of Maryland when he went into the NBA and got drafted by the Boston Celtics and they dealt big to get him. And Red Auerbach himself said that he waited three years to get this kid and bring a new energy to the aging Celtics, but he never stepped foot on an NBA court. Because not long after being drafted, he did some cocaine with friends in his dorm room and it caused him to have a heart attack and he died from it. He was going to be the future of the Celtics, but he never got the chance to wear the uniform. Number 2. Magic Johnson Thought we were done with the legends who had their careers in badly? Nope, these last two spots would prove that. Magic Johnson is by and large one of the greatest players to ever play in the NBA period. He came in red hot and helped the Lakers win the title in his rookie season, then helped bring the NBA to new heights via his rivalry with Boston Celtics legend Larry Bird, and won four more titles along the way. And he could have kept going, but then he got HIV. Now you have to remember, in the 1990s, AIDS was considered a death sentence for many. So when Magic Johnson got it, he had to retire. But then he went unretired later because he learned that he wouldn't transmit it as long as he didn't bleed on anyone in a major way. But when he attempted to return, the NBA locker room swirled with rumors about how infectious he was. And after a pregame incident, Magic realized he lost the trust of everyone and thus retired again. Obviously, with the knowledge that we have now, we know we could have kept going and he would have been fine. And he's been an all-time great analyst and NBA personality after his second retirement. But it is still a rough way for a legend to go out. Number 1. Michael Jordan Surprise? Well, honestly, you shouldn't be. Because if you recall, Michael Jordan had three different endings to his career. After the first three-peat, after the second three-peat, and then his time with the Wizards. Now, to give his credit, he didn't come back out of vanity. He came back because of the events in 9-11 and wanting to give Washington something to cheer for and believe in. He even brought back in his old coach, Doug Collins, to help him and try to bring some true magic to the Wizards. On one hand, he did go and make a splash, and the Wizards were the second most watched team in the NBA during his time there, and he wasn't a slouch. The problem, though, was that while he was still good, his team really wasn't. He didn't have the support system that he had back with the Bulls, and as a result, he didn't make the playoffs of any of the years as a Wizard. Thus, most people speak of Jordan's career ending in Chicago and forgetting the Wizard years altogether. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at the various NBA stars who had their careers end in a really bad fashion, whether it be due to personal issues or injuries or just staying too long? Which of these players were you the most shocked to see on this list? Which ones do you feel could have done more if they hadn't gone out like they did? Do you know of any other players who should be on this list? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and we will see you next time on the channel.